All right. Howdy all. That is the last cowboy euphemism I'll, I'll use. Um, welcome to week one of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Arena Gauntlet League. And we're here with our know. first feature match. Uh, Dan A. The Beatdown Bringer is going to be joining me today. What's up, dude? How's it going? Since Raphael has, uh, he has nobly come forward to fill in the last spot, which was unfilled as of yesterday afternoon. And as a reward, he gets to face... Caleb, who is our winningest feature match player by a very long shot. So <laughs> he did. And and I, I like that you stress that in today's <laughs> announcement because yeah. <laughs> what I did is I put my money on this underdog, uh, with the figure that, you know, by the slim chance Pruden does eke it out, I will be a rich, very rich man. Yeah. Oh, so uh, Raphael a little bit uh forgiven for his keep by drawing a mountain here, so he has all three colors. Um, does also have, oh, I guess he's playing more colors than I thought. He has a Plains as well in hand. Uh, he is just going to kill this mana dork. He has an Irascible Wolverine caught in the Crossfire, which is that two damage uh, to everything spell with Spree, Rictus Robber, and a Take the Fall and a Plains. So it looks like he's got a lot of different colors. What's uh, Caleb working with over there? And Caleb's hand, we have uh, two four drops in the form of Rodeo Pyromancers uh, and Quilt Charger. Um, and you'll see the first two drop coming down in the form of Stubborn Burrow Fiend. He's got a gold pan to back it up. Um, but, you know, looks like Prune's got some breathing room. Ah, yes. Rakdos uh, Gem Lightfoot deck. I like it. <laughs> nice nice little pull there. He's yeah, drawn a sort of wealth and power for turn, which uh, maybe might do some work. But uh, Stubborn Burrow Fiend has just been one of these one? two drops that... Uh, at least in draft, when I see it on the other side, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> time for me to time for me to interact or do something better than a barrel fiend. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty good on this uh, this flyer. Yeah, and if he draws an untapped land, which he did, he can do nice. that. I mean, I'm not biased. And the and the and the good news is that first of all, it has vigilance. Second of all, um, if he just plays the sword. Uh, and equips it, he'll then get a trigger to draw a card at the end of turn from the the light foot. So we'll see. If uh, won't he have cast the sword from hand? Oh, or? sure. Yeah. Well, maybe next turn then. Subsequent turns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This 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 light foot card. I don't see it on the battlefield very often because at least in draft you don't see a lot of blue white. Um, turn turns out that people like casting spells and <laughs> and the archetype sometimes tells you not to. But he's just going to definitely go for the attacks here. He says, let me attack this too. It's not blocking the Burrow Fiend. And Caleb might just have to yep. kind of throw his Burrow Fiend uh, in front here. What is normally the defensive deck looks like is going to the offense and will probably get a huge advantage. Does he have any spells to double up in his in his hand there? He has a take the fall. I mean, he could, he could just use it as a divination post-combat if he wants to because yep. he gets a little treasure. Oh, be too shabby. I think he's just going to take that offer. Yeah, he just says, let's let's just cycle this, but uh, it's mega cycling because it draws two. <laughs> okay. He's now drawn a uh, Thunder okay. Salvo, uh, which can uh, which can do some do some work. So, I mean, a really nice card here in the form of Bristly Bind, which I imagine he'll play before he gets uh, his land out to get the landfall trigger. Oh, he will, Bristly. unfortunately, lose... He won't be able to play the four drop charger, but he will be able to at least. Uh, well, he'll, he, he does get two mana. The Pyromancer. He does get two mana yeah. from this Pyromancer. Again, not, not a card you see very often, but uh, I mean, when you can make use of it, it could do some reasonable work. It's just like in a set where everything's so powerful, something like that just doesn't make the cut a lot of time. Well, there goes a calamity. And you want to make it. sure you have like extra use for that mana because oftentimes, you know, if you've got four mana. Uh, because you played it, I mean, you better either have cards or something large to cast it to benefit from it. So this was this just a was was this just a bluff? Oh, uh, that was kind of just a bluff, right? Um, he attacked a four four and a four five into the five five. So I think you know, at the end of the day, if you're this far behind, you need to take risks. Yeah, see, um, so yeah, it makes sense to me that that could have been a bluff. That's where Caleb's so good because, like, me, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, well, they got a five five. I can't attack. And Caleb's like, the only way I'm winning is by getting in potentially free damage. 
Yeah. And that's why he's 19 and four in his future matches. <laughs> Dang, that's uh, <laughs> that's statistically improbable. Yeah, the next highest win total I think is 11, which is all, which is like a very good win total. But uh, yeah, he's appeared in the I'm most. Passive observer. observer. All right. Well, here comes a thunder salvo. Here comes a copy oh, thunder salvo where, where the copy will actually good. deal more. That's <laughs> gracious. Yeah, so the copy actually gets to deal more. That's cute. And that's, he, uh, that's pretty good. Now he gets to play Rictus Robber, and uh, Caleb's going to be uh, probably out of options here, unless he's got a board wipe somewhere there. Oh, well. Does he have a board wipe in there Raphael somewhere? said, people have been trash-talking all day, saying I'm going to lose, saying I stand no chance. I'm going to show them. <laughs> and he did. Man, imagine seeing that uh, Caleb was 19-4 and four and putting all your money on that guy. <laughs> I know there was an upset last league. I mean, there wasn't as much at stake. It was just future match predictions and you got clues, but you didn't actually lose anything if you didn't, if you know, for betting, for choosing wrong. But I know Caleb had a match against uh, Kevin I, who is a player that hasn't, not of, uh, hasn't made any top eights. So, uh, you know, was a, was a heavy favorite Caleb, and Caleb got upset, and I think... Uh, a few, only a few people got to benefit from that. <laughs> but here, uh, uh, I guess, here, I guess we'll find out after exactly how many, how many uh, bet bet on each side. Ooh, really good hand here for Caleb. Uh, we have uh, two lands into a naturalist, a prickly pear, a paladin, and uh, he can even plot the demonic ruckus on one if you'd like. Okay, so we got a uh, a mulligan here uh, for Raphael. He does appear to have all his colors between a black, red, crime land an island and a plains. He has the sword and the gem lightfoot that we saw last game, as well as a Vadmir, which is that two drop uh, black card, which we'll almost for sure see on see this turn. And he's got the red rock sentinel, which is that three mana defender artifact that can uh, turn your lands into treasures and draw, draw a card. Not a card you see often, yeah. but week one, you know, week one, you, you, you play whatever, whatever you can to, to have enough playables. Well, I think Prudence also recognized that in terms of matchup, he's probably the more defensive deck. We're seeing like a lot of removal, a lot of interaction, whereas Caleb's red green, he wants to smack face. So Red Rock Sentinel probably does more work here than it normally would otherwise. Yeah, of note, Raphael uh, did not spend enough time in sideboarding for me to even see anything. He just clicked done immediately <laughs> onto the waiting screen. So uh, he had no uh, thoughts of even uh, mulligan, uh, not mulliganing, but sideboarding. He's asking Caleb very nicely to not kill. <laughs> don't, don't kill my guy, bro. I mean, oh, but... you know, like the Eldrain card said, he didn't say please. So that's right. <laughs> He's certainly not obliged to. Those are the rules. All right. Well, nice little. I mean, I don't know if Caleb's gonna need the treasures later, but we got to reanimate off the top here. Um, he does have a Spinewood Paladin in hand, which is okay. which means that if this uh, bandit gets removed, he won't even be able to uh, plot it, but he does have the Prickly Pear as a backup. Is Caleb uh, doing his best Honest Rutstein impersonation here, making a promise? Uh, I I wouldn't trust that guy. <laughs> so, we that have guy a re like... so we have a Reanimate drawn for turn, like the Reanimate. Uh, and there's three targets uh, in the graveyard there, so... I think he's going to wait, though. He's just going to play this 2-4 so he can defend himself. Reanimate is a very, very uh, yeah. broken card. Yeah. Especially when you have 20 life and the cost doesn't matter that much. It's like I've only seen the card in, like, Commander and Cube, so it's hard for me to, like, assess, like, oh, how good is this card in, in actual limited? Can you afford to pay the life? Most of the time. How how good is that block there? Like, could he have gotten more use out of that bad mirror? I mean, he has a reanimate. That's that's his only way to make it bigger, and then it's still just a three three. So I think he just uh, he said, "I'll I'll take I'll take the L on that bad mirror and just trade it in to not yeah. get so much damage." I like it. I mean, he, if he can like deal with this five four threat, looks like he probably is in the clear. Yeah, he doesn't. Um, do we have? He doesn't have Sorry, removal. He doesn't have removal and. Uh, Anything mm. he gets from the graveyard won't block a Spinewoods Paladin if it gets the gold pan. Yeah, because there's a four, there's a four three a... in the graveyard. I mean, he could double block again. This is a great double block. Yeah, I mean, uh, if he Caleb's going to offer them, Raph's going to take them. And now he can reanimate the Spinewoods and and make back some of the life that he lost. 
That's a good target. Uh, do we do we have an update in terms of uh, bets? <laughs> I think they're going to reveal it uh, at the end, but uh, I know I'm I I I, 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 I did not take part. So, a winning bet on tonight's feature match, Caleb would pay out 125. If you bet on Raf, if you're one of those uh, lucky duckies who bet on Raf oh. uh, from the looks of it, you would get 525. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> So okay. it looks like it's uh, more than five to one. That's uh, yeah. That's uh, I'll, I'll let you do the do the odds calculation. But so he decided to reanimate the gem Lightfoot to have a threat to go with the sword that can't really be blocked, rather than the Spinewoods Paladin, even though it's bigger and represents a bit of life gain. But this just represents a threat that can't be dealt with by basically yeah. any removal in green and red. You know, I did see yeah, he was playing the really planes. Green. If he has like something like Mystical Tether or one of the other many O-rings, uh, that would do it. But uh, the, as far as normal green and red cards that we're aware of in the set, I think this thing's just going to do whatever it wants. And now he gets to cast now, Richard, a slick sequence copied if he wants. Gosh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's absurd. Uh, I mean, normally I'm not a big fan of Flood. You know, I like when people get to play the game. Um, but considering I have more than $500 on the line, uh, I'm not <laughs> so terribly sad that Ethan is staring down at uh, just two lands in hand. Understandable, <laughs> but uh, I believe he did get to draw a card off this off the copy, right? Because it was cause, yes, yeah. Or he got to draw a card off of uh, not both, oh, but just man. the copy. Yeah. All right, well, uh, that's another land. Yeah, not not looking great here. He's got a rush of dread on top, which is uh, also bad news for <laughs> on, on top for Caleb. Okay, yeah. yeah. And he's got Rooftop That's, Assassin uh, in hand, which is that 2-2 two -two flyer. And he's drawn the Rush of Dread for not casting a spell. He's got the 2-2 two -two Flash flyer that can uh, pick I, off something. Another land. Range. All right. Well, Just another, another flyer. land. Oh, my God. Well, Rush of Dread's going to end it. He has to sack his only creature and lose half his yeah. life. So that's going to be that's gonna be it. Well, so a bit of a quick one here. And uh, uh, we got some gold coins getting, so uh, getting emoted I'm here. so glad I gambled. Good Lord. Look, you win some, you lose some, and uh, in this case, uh, you know anybody who bet for Caleb didn't take a huge loss, but anybody who bet for Raphael is uh, really in the black here. So congratulations to Raphael for taking down our first feature match, and we'll see him back in the announce booth in his rightful place in uh, for our next match in a little bit.